Now, the minority spokesperson on foreign affairs, uh, Okujetu Ablakwa, is accusing government of neglecting some 29 Ghanaian migrants stranded in Spain, one of them a pregnant woman. The Ghanaians, we're told, were part of 600 migrants rescued off the coast of Libya while traveling in a rickety boat to Europe in the, on the Mediterranean Sea. Ranking member on the Foreign Affairs Committee in Parliament, Samuel Okujetu Ablakwa, who has been on a fact-finding mission in Valencia, uh, has been speaking. We'll hear from him shortly. But let's quickly engage Joseph Opoku Gakpo, who has been gathering some information from the chairman of the Foreign Affairs Committee on what is being done to help the stranded migrant. Joseph, the spokesperson for the minority is saying that government has ignored all the calls uh, to help these people who are stranded in, in, in Spain. But you've also had a, a different uh, version of that story from the chairman of the uh, Foreign Affairs Committee. Uh, he has basically been responding to the claim that uh, the Akufuado administration has generally not done well when it comes to helping deal with migrant situations. And he insists that um, a lot has been done. Um, I'll, I'll get into those bits in a while, but um, a while ago in Parliament, I met the Foreign Affairs Minister, Madame Shelly Ayekobote, and uh, put out the details of uh, the statement that uh, some of the creator of Blackwa uh, issued and, and asked for a reaction. She indicated that uh, she would rather a comment and that in due course we would get them responding to the issue. So uh, the, the Foreign Affairs Ministry has indicated they are not commenting on the issues for now. Uh, but the Chairman of Parliament's Committee on Foreign Affairs, um, Frank Arnaud Dompre, um, ha has been making the point that uh, when these issues come up, uh, there's been instances that uh, how Ghanaians are treated abroad and locally by foreign entities come up which even himself, as uh, chairman of the Foreign Affairs Committee, has raised on the floor of parliament and demanded that the minister shows up to come explain to the House, which th the House is doing just well in terms of posing questions to um, officials of government for reactions and all. And so he, he disagreed with the uh, attempt by some of the creator of Black Hawaii statement to draw President Akufado, for example, into this and insist that he would want to hear the president speak publicly on the issue. Uh, he, he, he makes the point that there's been previous instances when Ghanaians have been stranded in Libya and elsewhere, and the effort has been made by government to go and leave them and bring them back home. So as far as he's concerned, when it comes to the NPP administration's record generally in helping Ghanaians who have been abandoned elsewhere and have gotten involved in migrant situations that affect them negatively, the NPP administration has done well with that and the president will not uh, sit back and not go on that particular duty when it comes to helping Ghanaians abroad. Mm. Well, Joseph, thank you very much for that explanation. But I'm sure that for those who are stranded, they are not probably probably not looking uh, at which party does the best when it comes to airlifting persons involved in migrant situations like this. Joseph Opoku Gakpo is our parliamentary correspondent there, bringing us up to speed on what's been happening there and the responses, the various responses that we require to understand some of these running issues. Now, let's hear from the ranking member of the Foreign Affairs Committee uh, in Parliament, Samuel Kujeto Ablakwa, who, like I indicated earlier, and like you've seen in those pictures, has been to Spain to interact with some of these stranded Ghanaians. Ghanaians still seek greener pastures in Europe, the United States, and other parts of the world, and they brave some shocking uh, conditions in order to get there. You recently went to Valencia following the headlines about that ship that was delayed uh, just off the coast um, for so many days. Uh, with people living under very s stressful conditions on the ship. Tell us, you know, very briefly uh, what the he headlines are of what you discovered on that trip. My brother Kojo, it's, uh, it's, it's not been easy for me. It's, uh, it's listening to the harrowing accounts. Uh, I was really mortified, honestly. Uh, it's, uh, I left Valencia with a very heavy heart, and I think that is quite an indictment on all of us in the political leadership. Um, we clearly have to be doing more. Um, the migrants told me, and I discovered that there are 29 Ghanaians, and this had not been known before I went to Valencia. Um, this is the biggest news item in Europe, in the international media, because of the controversy mm -hmm. that uh, the new Italian government led by the right-wing uh, interior yeah. minister, Matteo Salvini, mm. he turned away 
the Aquarius. And the Aquarius is a vessel which is operated by two um, aid and volunteer organizations, the Doctors Without Borders, and then you have this uh, 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 SOS Mediterranean, which is a Franco-German you know, aid organization. So they are conscious of what is happening on the Mediterranean Sea, all these rubber inflated dinghies that are capsiding and thousands of thousands of Africans are losing their yeah. lives. Yeah. So they decided to hide this ship and then carry out rescue missions. So they came by this 629 African migrants, directed the ship towards the Italian coast because that was closer. The Italians turned them away. They said, go to Malta. The Maltese government also turned them away. According to these migrants, they spent more than a week on the high seas. They were seasick. They had no food. They were running out of supplies. Then, fortunately, the new Spanish government intervened and said that, OK, come use our port in Valencia. We will give you safe refuge. And that is only how come they were able to arrive at shore. Now, I got a tip off uh, from some friends within the international aid organizations who said that, look, we are quite a number of Ghanaians here, and we are surprised that you guys are not talking about it. So I said, OK, I'll come have a look. So I got the authorization of the minority leadership that I could go and just see what. And I did not know what to expect. I arrived in the port of uh, Valencia. I was told that. Uh, they had just moved them to a temporary camp at a place called Shente in Valencia. So uh, I was uh, helped there. It's a very fortified uh, place, but because uh, things had been arranged for me, it was quite easy to have access. And I was stunned, you know, really stunned. Uh, beehive of activity. They provided beds. They've had to give them clothing. So they are all in this blue T-shirt. Uh, I have pictures that I have uh, uh, published. Uh, so all of them are in this blue Red Cross provided T-shirts. And um, some had to be taken to hospitals. There are seven pregnant women. One Ghanaian is, is pregnant included. Ghanaian. Yeah, pregnant Ghanaian woman. And then there were 112 minors below the age of 17. Can you believe that? You know, really, really horrendous. And uh, they told me that the route is through Techiman to Niger, and then Niger to Libya. And according to them, the first round of deaths occurred between Niger and Libya, the Sahara Desert. Very harsh weather conditions. It's the hottest place anywhere in the world. And they tell me that, apart from the harsh weather conditions, there are militias and all these gang leaders who extort. So if you don't have money, you run out of money, the next militia gang you meet and you don't have money for them, they shoot you dead. So they told me that less than 10% of those who cross the Mediterranean Sea make it. So the vast majority of people they started with have died. That's the minority spokesperson on foreign affairs, Sukujeto Ablakwa, there, telling us what he saw and what he thinks government would do. Well, contrary to his claims that government has abandoned them to their fate, the chairman of the, part of, uh, of the committee on foreign affairs says that government is actually taking steps to address uh, the situation. We need to look at the broader picture. Uh, there was a Valletta, there was a Valletta agreement, Mortar, which uh, African... Um, union and African uh, heads of states have uh, entered with a certain agreement in terms of these immigration issues. It is a bigger matter. And then Ghana made a strong representation. Uh, I recall the Amnesty, Amnesty International has said that there should be transparency in coming to a conclusion on, in terms of what the agreements are. So this is an overarching uh, concern that we want to look at. If you recall what happened at Libya and the attitude of government, immediately I raised the matter on the floor. It wasn't the minority. I raised the matter and even called for the minister to come and do a representation before the House. It wasn't the minority. Okay. So that was done. And then there was a positive response. The minister was, was how 
to the house. She made a representation. A few weeks afterwards, there was uh, an aircraft that went to Libya to airlift Ghanaians down. Beyond that, I think that, yes, we, we need to do more in terms of engagement, letting our people know that, I mean, if you want to travel, you need to go through processes, and especially traveling to these areas of the world. Um, a lot more is expected. So uh, I, I think the government has shown some commitment, but I agree that we need to do more. But if you begin to speak like this, then one would have to look at what was happening before. Okay? One would need to look at what... I mean, the more treatment to Ghanaians in Libya, it, hasn't, it didn't start within this, this era. I, I agree with him that we need to do more. But you see, when he's criticizing, he's, he should be measured in his criticism. Because there are times, we never saw anything like that. Ghanaians died in Gambia, what did we see? Ghanaians died in Libya, what did we see? This time, we, they have been airlifted and brought back home. I think that beyond that, we should look at a broader picture. Well, let's... This overly politicizing issues, especially matters that contain uh, the, our image as a country, they should be, the minority should be a bit measured in their criticism. I'm not saying they shouldn't criticize, and I have accepted that we need to do more, but we need to know where we are coming from. My last question, in, in fact, in the latest incident with regards to the 25 Ghanaians of Spain, he thinks there's the need to hear from President Takofado personally, uh, you know, um, make demands and speak publicly about this and give directions on um, helping safeguard these people and, and caution Ghanaians about traveling in very dangerous ways out there. What do you think? Should we really be hearing from the president? You should, we shouldn't personalize it. I don't think that we have to be personalizing this thing and putting it at the doorstep of the presidency. We have a minister for foreign affairs and regional integration. The minister has been working for some time. If there are issues and there are concerns, we think that the minister has not been up to tax. He, as a ranking member, has all the rights file questions, make statement, um, our orders even allows him to raise this as a big public matter, to be raised. The president is a human being, yes, he's commander-in-chief of the Ghana Armed Forces. We agree, but uh, a lot of the things about diplomacy we talk about, you can't just come out and make sweeping statement. A lot, a lot of talking, a lot of negotiations is being done back door. And he knows that diplomacy, uh, you are best not, you know, issuing and, and getting aggressive and issuing statements. For instance, the U.S. matter that happened. There are a lot of backdoor negotiation, and that is how diplomatic issues are handled between two sovereign bodies. That is how they are handled. It is not handled in the normal political and propaganda mood. No, it cannot be done like that. So the president will listen. The president himself is a diplomat. He will listen. And I'm sure that where he thinks that he should take a lesson from what the minority is calling on, he will take a, he will take a cue. And Mr. Arnold Dompre there, he is chairman of the Committee on Foreign Affairs in Parliament and in that